Mayeti Allah says northerners manage Nigeria better than their southern counterparts. And Nigeria needs new liberation movement that's according to governor elect of Anambra stage Charles Soludo. This is Plus Politics and I am Justin Akadone. Now, the national president of the Mieti Allah Katal Hor, Bello Bodejo, says the association will not support a southern candidate for the presidency in 2023. Bodejo said northerners manage the country better than their counterparts in the south. Now, Bodejo also spoke on the grazing routes, adding that states should return areas earlier marked for reserves to herders. He stated that the Ruga is the language of politicians and cattle colony is the language of people who want to eat government money. He also accused Samuel Otom, that's the governor of Beno State, of playing politics with the Fulani. Now joining us to discuss is Alex Obonaya, he is the National Publicity Secretary of the Ohanese and Dibo. And the Mieti Allah National Secretary will also be joining us, Baba Osman. Many thanks for joining us. We'll begin with you, Alex Obonaya. Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, the concerns of the Mieti Allah. They said um, the northerners, you know, manage Nigeria better than the southern counterpart. And they are saying come 2023, they will not be supporting any southerner for the elections. What, what, are, what are your concerns, really? And what do you really think about all of that? Yeah, you asked two questions. Yes, I did, too. You want a double barrel. You asked to we talk about management of resources and also supporting the South uh, uh, media, like saying they will support. Okay, them. let us just start with management of resources. You, let me answer the two. All right, go ahead then. Yeah. Um, in the first place, media, uh, as the name suggests, uh, people who are you know trade itinerant traders, uh, they are not opinion molders. They are not the elite when it comes to serious politicking, you know, real politic uh, in Nigeria. They don't they don't come in. So I don't want to believe that it has impact. It has no meaning. That's Mieti Allah talking. Mieti Allah talking. Uh, they are not the opinion molders of the northern region. I've lived in the north before. I can tell you the opinion molders, not the Mieti Allah. So what they have said is inconsequential with respect to whether where they will vote or where they, where they will not vote. Understand the character of the North, especially the Mieti Allah. You know, most of the people who find the Mieti Allah have their bosses, their principals, you know, somewhere that will always give them directives on what to do. So I don't count on the, that, to, I don't count on people when it comes to real politics in Nigeria. So coming to um, uh, Northern uh, managing resources more than the better than the Southerners. Of course, such categorical statements, unless they don't want to join in it because, we don't want to join in it because uh, in the North and in, as in the South, we have uh, good resource managers as well as bad resource managers. But if I should look at Igbo, for example, uh, in Igbo, that's something that is given to them, is their ingenuity, their resourcefulness, you know, the tenacity, ability to turn something, turn events, you know, things around from nothing. So no person can talk about it, but when you talk to a resource management. Uh, so, but all the same, you know, in the north, you have people come as well manage resources, where in the south, the same. So that categorization is not very necessary, but I am sure that no person can talk about Igbo, about people who do not have to manage resources. The same thing with the west. And uh, of course, the evidence is clear. If you come to every part of uh, Oyo State, Ogu State, you see resourcefulness at play. You know, compare it with uh, some other places. You know, so uh, that that comparison is not very, very important. It's not really necessary. But I'm sure that uh, in the southeast, for example, where I come from, Anezendibu, 
we are talking about deep, we are talking about resourcefulness, we are talking about ingenuity, we are talking about inventiveness and creativity. We are talking about ability to turn something from nothing. We are talking right. about wealth creation and prosperity. As when you are talking about South East. And it is something extended to the Southwest. So the guy who made that statement maybe is a, is a statement in a statement in error. And it's an unnecessary categorization. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Major Bonaya. We'll come back to you later. We also have joining us Ambaba Osman, who is the National Publicity Secretary of the Mieto and Lakato Rivers Association. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Al Haji Osman. Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, my name is Baba Osman Galzarma. Uh, I am not the CEO. I am the National Secretary of Magban. Okay, the National Secretary, uh, we stand to be corrected. Thank you so much for that correction. Let us just thank you for having me. Okay, let us just dive into the affairs. Really, you know, uh, this uh, particular discussion is actually more like a debate between who manages and the South, um, the country better, the North or the South. And uh, Bill Obadijo was quoted as saying that uh, the association will not support a Southern candidate. Specifically, he went on to say that um, the North are better resource managers compared to you know the South. But then. And again, I just spoke with Alex Obonaya, who is on the, the mouthpiece of the Ohanes and Dibu. He says uh, the, the statement of the Mietu um, uh, Cattle uh, at Allah Cattle Hall is inconsequential. What do you make of that? Um, well, I, I didn't hear you very well because of the echo uh, on the phone. Uh, but I suppose uh, the issue in discussion is about. Um, Northern versus the South. Who manages the I country it, better? I, I think I think it's about the statement made by the leader of Nete Ala Kautol Hore. Yes, please. Uh, that, that, that group is on my group. I represent Nete Ala Cattle Breeders Association. But okay. in my, my personal view, uh, Nigeria belongs to everybody. Mm. Uh, in the spirit of give and take, uh, everybody is entitled to to clinch to the leadership of this country. Uh, if if the reality of the country will give him vote, irrespective of where he comes from. This is Nigeria for all of us, this is Nigeria for for for, for, for everybody. Uh Obasanjo was the was the president for quite some time. Jonathan becomes president. Now Buhari is the president. So this is the way it is supposed to go. So I don't know why my colleague in the other association made such a statement anyway. But since it came from my association, this is my personal view. Okay, invariably, if I should take that one step further, uh, going forward in 2023, uh, would your association, that's the Mieto uh, al Lakato Brothers Association, be supporting uh, the sauna just in case uh, maybe they are actually the flag bearers for most political parties? You say? Would the Mieti at Alakato Breeders Association ordinarily support anyone who is not from the North and decent? Well, I didn't hear your question up to now. It's because of the echo. The echo cannot allow me to hear what you say. Okay, I'll try and repeat again, just in case you didn't hear. Let me try and uh, ask oh, the okay. question. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you said uh, the Bell Labodejo is not part of your association, but I'm, not, I'm now taking it a step further. Ordinarily, would Matt Ben support a candidate yeah. in 2023 who is not from the North? Uh, well, you see, um, my own association is a democratic association. We have presentation in almost, in almost uh, all the local governments and the states of the federation. We don't take decisions that just like this. Before we take a decision that affects uh, the, the affecting national issues, we have to contact each and every part of our membership. We have to contact the Congress before we come out with a position. And since our association is a political association, we, don't, we, ha we, we cannot make any comment now until when the parties are presenting candidates. We have, to wait, we have to wait until when the parties have selected their candidates before we sit and see who, which of the candidates, which of the political parties, is appealing to us which one the political parties can 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 provide the demands of our members before we decide to support anybody whether he's coming from the north the south wherever he's coming from that should be a decision of the congress of my association 
All right, thank you so much, um, Baba uh, Usman. Just hang on. Let's um, bring um, back um, Alex Obonaya into this particular discourse. Another concern thank of the Mieti Allah Katal Hor, you know, yeah. in the you know in the interview, uh, they talked about uh, Alex Obonaya. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you. Okay, so they talked about um, the Ruga, you know, which has actually been uh, controversial over time, you know, since we've had um, the farmers and um, herders crisis in Nigeria. But you know, Bello Body just says um, the Ruga is the politician's um, language, while cattle colony is a language of people who want to eat government money. He was talking about um, uh, grazing reserves and all of that. Uh, there seems to be no end in sight over this issue of, uh, you know, grazing. So what is the position of the Ohanese and Dibo concerning this issue of Ruga and um, uh, grazing in Nigeria? Yeah, I'm talking about grazing roots or grazing reserve yes. of, of Ruga. Yes, go ahead, yes. Well, um, we are talking about grazing roots. My brother, something that is clear, that doesn't require much argument is that what operated, what functioned as uh, operated 60 years ago cannot, of course, operate now. When we talk about uh, roots, or grazing roots, about 50 years ago, evidently some of those places that used to be grazing roots are no more as they used to be. Um, some of them have, have some buildings erected on them, roads created, the structures changed. So evidently the grazing reserve, the, gra the uh, grazing roots of about 40, 30 years ago can no longer be as it was. So. Uh, we are saying that what obtained about 60 years ago cannot completely obtain now. So with respect to grazing roots. As a matter of fact, we are in a modern civilization. Modern civilization does not really give room for somebody taking cattle from the north down to the Paracourt. Efforts will be made. These people, these boys that are taking these cattle, they, they should go to school. In fact, when you look at the pastoral nomadism, it's one that took place about 100, 200 years ago. There's no civilized world today you find the people following cattle from the north down to the south. It is even in the interest of my people in the north that they have a, a, a grazing reserve where any person who wants to go and buy cattle, cattle can always go there and buy it. For example, in Enugu, we stay here in Enugu. If you come to Enugu, they have a place where you can go and buy the cattle. They come with lorries into the Enugu uh, um, community. So the issue of going through the uh, cattle routes, the grazing routes, you know, it's, it's not necessary this uh, millennium. It's something that is outdated, you know, something that they existed about 200 years ago. And we are saying that those things that are, are modern can no longer be applied now. So that is what our position there. I've got, more importantly, it is in the grazing uh, route that you have conflict between the herdsmen and the local, um, maybe the farmers. And all this is about sources of conflict. I think it's important that we re reduce the sources of conflict. For example, here in Enugu, uh, somebody, a full animal was a chairman of the local government, Enugu local government, about in the 50s. He contested with an Igbo. He won an Igbo. The Igbo, they contested again in, after four years. He still won the election, Enugu municipality. They, they still have the house here in Enugu. So this is the kind of cordial relationship that been existing between the people and the north. But I tell these young people now, some of them are not even outside, some of them are not, are not even full of it. Some of them are from outside. When they have conflict with the rural farmers, all this is create problem. So that before you know it, it will escalate and it will appear as if it is Yoruba versus uh, north or Igbo versus uh, Fulani, or this and that. So when you see source of problem, source of conflict, the best way is to remove the source of conflict for harmonious coexistence. All right. Okay, okay thank you so much, I'm Alex Obonaya. Let's uh, bring back um, Bala um, Osman, um, if we would. Uh, Bala, basically, you have heard uh, from Alex, he feels that um, the issue of um, grazing roots uh, actually, you know, outmoded because uh, the Mayeti Allah Katao Hor is saying that um, all those governors, even before they were born, I'm quoting them verbatim, said they had them, these grazing roots somewhere gazetted while others were not. 
Do you really think um, grazing roads should be brought back? Because right now, Alex Obonaya feels that it is what causes all the problems between farmers and herders, and that um, Niger, Niger should be talking about reducing the source of conflict. Uh, so Ruga is the way forward. What's your position, really? All right, uh, we'll try and reconnect again with uh, uh, Baba Osman. He is um, the National Secretary of the Mieti uh, Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria. We still have Alex Omonaya, who is a National Publicity Secretary of Ahanese and Debo. You know, but the issue right now is that uh, there's, uh, the National President of the Mieti Allah is actually saying that uh, there seems to be some division uh, between. Uh, the South, really, that's why, you know, he feels that they are not really better managers. He says that for the North, there's no distinction between, uh, you know, where you're from, where the other person is from. But he says that uh, in the South, they always just talk about um, the Yoruba should come first and uh, the Igbo should come first, or even those from the South South should come first. Do you really think that um, the South are not really, you know, pushing a common front that would actually better their chances ahead of 2023? Well... In every region, I had uh, um, ethnic forces at play. And after that, Nigeria is concerned, it's a major issue. It's a, what we call centrifugal forces, ethnic, uh, uh, centrifugal ethnic forces at play. Uh, no person can deny that fact. If you go to Burunu area, uh, the Burunu area is very distinct from uh, the Aousa area. The outside recognizes the Fulani in their midst. If you go to Benue, you will see that it's still in the north, but TV people recognize themselves as a nationality. And you move away from there, you go to Plateau State, you know, where we have a church, people. They are recognized, they recognize themselves with a distinct identity. So there's no need to deceive ourselves on that. So the same way with the South, we have the Yoruba, we have the Igbo, we have the Edo. This is how we found ourselves as a Nigeria, and that is why they will need to, re to negotiate the kind of coexistence that should go on into what we call federalism. Federalism gives autonomy to each group. In fact, the lowest group should have a certain level of autonomy. That is what federalism guarantees. Uh, but unfortunately, with uh, the, the length of the military, you're now finding a kind of a form of unity, a form of administration, which is not good for uh, Nigeria. So we are saying that uh, each region has got its own ethnic uh, forces at play. You know, I, um, I, I understand the political history of this country. I can go on to tell you that. But however, the, what is important is that the southern region, unlike what the south as a whole, unlike what people used to see in the past, we've been able to manage our differences. For example, when Jonathan contested the election as a, for, as a president, you see how the whole South, uh, the whole, let me use the word, Southeast, you know, voted, South South voted. In fact, uh, almost all parts of the South voted Jonathan. There was no et ethnic demarcation or distinction in that election, isn't it? The other time, the, uh, in the Southern and Middle Bay Leadership Forum, we took a position that any party that zones presence away from the Southeast or the South from the South, we not give the support and backing of all these ethnic groups. You can see unity at work. That we have, let's work on unity in diversity. When you recognize that we have a diversity, but then you have capacity to unite each other. I should take possible. All right, all right. Alex Obona, let me just butt in here. You know, I'll still come back to you because I need you to clarify the air if you feel that um, ethnicity has actually been the bane of um, you know, the country's um, and politics over the years. But uh, I have um, Baba Osman joining us yet again. Before we had that disconnect, I wanted to get your opinion concerning the issue of uh, you know, grazing routes, uh, grazing reserves, and of course, uh, you know, the way forward, you know, if Ruga actually is that particular issue that we should be talking about right now. Because Belo Bodejo seems to think that um, uh, Nigeria should be going back to grazing routes. Although Alex Obonaya is saying that um, grazing routes are actually the major causes of conflict between farmers and herders. What are your thoughts, really? All right, I think we're having issues um, connecting with um, Baba Osman. We'll just um, stay with Alex Obonaya as we, uh, you know, try to round off on this particular discourse. So before I tried getting back to Baba Osman, I asked the question, Eva, you think that ethnicity is actually the bane of the nation's uh, 
politics and it has actually done us you know, more harm than good. Yeah, uh, the fight remains on the management of ethnicity. Ethnicity is going to be a problem, not just in Nigeria, but in the whole of Africa. It will be difficult for one to believe that the whole of Africa will have over 2,000 2, ethnic groups in Africa. I don't even know whether the Tower of Babel took, took effect in Africa. You know, so it's always a problem because each ethnic group will have a way of, you know, what we call ethnocentrism, so, you know, having interest, but uh, interest in particular ethnic group. It's always a problem. However, somebody can create, if we can come up with a philosophical ideological framework that it will be that will be bigger than ethnicism, that will be bigger than ethnicism. For example, the first coming of Buhari, when you talked about war against indiscipline, war against indiscipline took the space. The ethnicity became a secondary. Everything was focused on how to fight war against indiscipline. So there is a philosophy you can create that will take care of all these things. But if somebody comes to say, oh, well, you're creating employment. Ethnicity, the employment does not recognize ethnicity. Something as philosophies and the other do not recognize ethnicity. What we have is people that, in, that are unable to manage the diverse interests of, uh, uh, of uh, various ethnic groups. That is the only thing we have, leadership problem. Ethnicity has come to stay. There's no, there no way we can wish it away. But what we are looking for those who can manage the ethnic uh, groups. In fact, what, there's what we call some ethnic forces. For example, if you are coming to a place like Anambra, uh, you see have people from Onesha. Uh, uh, you see, have a Newi, you see, have a Guata, you see, have a All these things are some ethnic interests. But you see, what Soludo is trying to do now is to create an ideology that will be so big and so large that people will no longer remember all these sub ethnic forces. So the same thing happens in the nation. Like when we are, Nigeria was fighting independence, what preoccupied the mind of everybody was how the white would go, how to fight colonialism. And that was easy to, that was a mobilization platform for everybody. So a good leader will create something that will mobilize everybody so that the issue of ethnicity becomes a country. So there's no, there's no way we can wish away ethnicity. But it depends on how it's managed. And one of the best ways to manage the ethnicity is through federalism. All over the world, go to uh, uh, Canada, go to Switzerland, go to India, you know, go to some of these other places with diverse uh, ethnic interests. Then you see that the best way to manage it is through the proper federalism and to create an ideology that is overwhelming, that will go count, that will counter the mind, the mind, the what you call the, the ethnic interests at, at the bottom. So that's it. And above all, try to crea create a philosophy for excellence. You know, so that society be excellence driven. So when you see somebody who knows the uh, work, you allow him to do the work, and it will take interest of the, uh, the vulnerable, the weak. Hope you understand. When you see somebody who is in a hospital, allow mm. somebody who is a specialist in medicine to take over and drive the process. But do you think, but do you think Alex, do you think we can actually get to that particular point where Nigerians would actually want to, you know, choose leaders based on merit, uh, based on their pedigree, and not necessarily where they come from? You said that, Truth, uh, truth be told, uh, ethnicity cannot be done away with Nigeria. It's just about managing it. You even mentioned countries like the U.S., Canada, India, who actually have put um, you know, the, the concept of federalism forward, and they've been able to manage the differences. But how do we get there? When can we get there in Nigeria where we can put um, ethnicism, ethnicism you know, aside and just uh, make sure that um, well, the right I'm man for the candidate? Crafty, careful leader mm. and do it. It's very simple. A leader with some programs, that has sufficient programs that can occupy the mind of everybody. Like I'll give you an, give you an example of what Buhari did when he said war against indiscipline. People were more focused, more focused on war against indiscipline, how to fight corruption at that time. And they forgot about where, you come, where we come from. So that is the kind of, when Muhammad came on board, people were focused on what he was doing. I forgot about the fact that he was um, uh, outside. So when he died, people were crying. 
Okay, but, the kind of okay, but would the Ohanese uh, and Debo ordinarily vote for a man? And uh, just in case, just maybe he's not from the, the Southeast and um, they feel that uh, he indeed has the pedigree and he has all, you know, the qualities to manage Niger. Ordinarily, would Ohanese and Debo, you know, stand for a man who is not from the Southeastern, you know, part of the country? What, what for now? What really happened is uh, we have come. We came up with rotation of uh, presidency. Uh, that is say what is going on now. Rotation of presidency, and it becomes inconceivable for one to begin to think about uh, Ibu putting another person outside uh, Ibu because it's the turn of Ibu to produce the president for Nigeria now. So it is uh, that is something that is very clear. Uh, so it is difficult for any Igbo really of what to begin to contemplate the voting another person outside the Igbo or the Southeast. So that one is a different ball game. But I assume that in course of time and because of, I remember that when Alexei Kweman, the group, uh, came up with this uh, seasonal structure, they were not thinking about permanent um, future for political future for Nigeria. They were saying that by the time each, each uh, political zone your political zone has tested the power. Then it will become easier for us to begin to manage ourselves. You know, they were not looking at it as a permanent geopolitical feature for okay. Nigeria, no. Uh -huh. So what the equation is okay, but this is the position of Ohanese and Diva, in fact, all the, all the South Easterners for now. All right, it thank is you. Our talk. All right, thank you so much. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Alex Obonaya, National Publicity Secretary of the Hornets and Debo, thanks for your comment and of course your input on this particular discourse. And earlier we were joined by Baba Osman, National Secretary of Mieto Alakato Breeders Association of Nigeria. We do appreciate uh, your time, gentlemen. All right, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, Nigeria needs a new liberation movement according to, you know, the, you know, the, the, pre, uh, the not the president right now, the governor of Anambra State, Charles Oludo. More in a moment. Do join us again.